First, today I want to do a short video highlighting a lot of cross currents that I see going on. Uh, the first cross current, which I won't show you um, pictures about uh, graphics, but I'll talk to you about it right now, is this thing called Bitcoin dominance. It seems to be changing from Bitcoin dominance to perhaps Bitcoin slash ETH dominance because Ethereum, Ethereum is considered more institutional. That's the first reason. And remember with the Shanghai slash Chappella upgrade and the merge that occurred on September 15th of last year, Ethereum has become more institution for, institutional for many reasons. Number one, uh, it uses less energy. Number two, it's like... Um, Rao Powell says it's like a benchmark index in terms of, uh, he calls it like a, almost like a treasury yield, meaning that the yield on Ethereum is a benchmark yield equivalent to the 10 year treasury, for example. I don't agree with that, but I agree that the yield on Ethereum is perhaps the safest yield that you can get on crypto on all crypto now i'm excluding bitcoin of course because bitcoin does not use proof of stake it uses proof of work so there is no yield you gain um, dollars via mining as you all know or should know so that's the first cross current is that there's a weird thing going on with um, bitcoin dominance because of um, of uh, the Ethereum uh, Shanghai upgrade. And the second thing I want to talk to you about is, surprisingly, there is a, an attack on stable coins. Now we all know about that, but, but there were rumors of Operation Choke Point. And they said that would not only cover crypto-friendly banks and la layer one coins that are securities, they, there was also a rumor, now it's true, that the U.S. government and other governments are going after stable coins. So because of that, and I'm not going to show you a chart here, the market share of stable coins, the market cap of stable coins has declined. So what's going on is Bitcoin and maybe even Ethereum together are acting as the safe haven assets. I know that's like an oxymoron in the cryptoverse that Bitcoin and Ethereum are a safe haven asset. But that's what seems to be going on. Now, what I want to focus on today is what's going on with um, Bitcoin. And it almost just seems like, you know, this Bitcoin, this Bitcoin standard, the e, uh, Bitcoin BTC, I think it's 20 standard. It reminds me of ERC20 coins. So basically, Bitcoin has its an equivalent thanks to the taproot and all these other upgrades on Bitcoin, it seems to be having the same problem that Ethereum does with these ERC20 meme coins. So as you know, the Ethereum network has been known throughout the years as having problems with high gas fees and volatile gas fees because the Ethereum network is getting clogged with all these meme coins. And the latest meme coin, as you know, is Peppy, Pep, basically. And that's basically, cl that's clogging um, Ethereum. And also, these meme coins are now clogging Bitcoin. And also, we have something called inscription slash ordinals. And those are, together with the meme coins, clogging the Bitcoin network. And that's why the Bitcoin network is charging very high fees, and I'm going to show you an example of that. And also, I was worried about Binance uh, maybe not being rep reputable or ethical, and I was worried about the Binance exchange a few months ago when FTX went bust. Now, Binance is saying that they had to with, uh, temporarily halt with, uh, withdrawals of uh, Bitcoin, but it's not because there's something wrong or unethical with Binance this time. Yes, they're getting sued. They have other issues. But this time along, around, it's not because I'm worried that Binance is a fraud or whatever. They're just having problems with uh, congestion on the Bitcoin network. So I'm going to show you some 
some slides, and even some ex excerpts from a video. So recently, Glass noted a video on this, on ordinarials and inscriptions and how they're affecting the network. And they haven't put out a newsletter yet. Actually, they haven't even put the, the video out on their website. I was able to get this video on, out of all places, YouTube. So I'm going to show you just one or two excerpts from that. Maybe it's just one. Yeah, actually, it's two. So let me minimize myself so I could show you. The first one is what the highlighting called, and you can see on the left, top left, Bitcoin number of transactions. And this is over the last 14 days. And you can see that transactions on the right here has skyrocketed. Now, usually, and this is where it gets a little crazy, and this is why I want to focus on what I called, I'm calling cross currents. Because usually when transactions go up, we need a peak in Bitcoin. But this is an exception. Transactions are going up because of what I talked to you earlier, ordinal slash ins inscriptions. So let's go to the next slide. Now here you can see their inscriptions are skyrocketing and you can see the, the, the text inscriptions and image ins inscriptions. So these are basically ordinal. So this is proof that what's going on only has to do with what's going on recently with the taproot upgrade and inscriptions. It's not saying that there's a top in Bitcoin. So just be aware of that. And I'm going to show you a series of uh, websites that show you examples of this. And you can look them up on your own. The first one is from Bitcoin, Bitcoinist.com. It's saying Bitcoin under attack with BRC20. I'm sorry, I call it BTC20. It's actually called BRC20. And then if you look down here, it says the Bitcoin networks, networks mempool, and I'm going to show you that later live. It clogged with 415,000 transactions waiting to be added onto the big blockchain. And then it says, while supporters argue that the BRC20 tokens are, gro are groundbreaking innovation, they're leaving it given problem problems with transaction fees, but they're, um, they're increasing fees that are going to miners. So I guess that's a good thing. And then they noted, lastly, there's effectively speculation with shit coins. And we mentioned that already. And I'm not going to go over this whole thing with you. You can read it. This is uh, an article that came out recently at Bitcoin News. Uh, and the date is, I don't know, I think it was like two days ago, basically. It's, it's actually one day ago. It's fairly new. So let's go to the next uh, article. So here it says average Bitcoin transaction fees skyrocketed to $19.20 per transfer. So if you really want uh, the transfer done, there's like a bidding war. And this is very similar. It's analogous to what's going on with Ethereum. And again, I won't go over this. I'll just go over this right here. This first, this paragraph. Bitcoin transaction fees have surged in the last 24 hours with the average fee reaching $19.20 per transfer. And so there's a backlog of transfers trapped in the mempool. So next slide. So crypto stocks drop after Binance holds Bitcoin withdrawals for hours. Actually, Bitcoin dropped too, to just be aware of that. Uh, so I'm not going to go over this. This is just pointing out what I said to you earlier, that I don't think there's a problem with ethics or integrity of Binance, but the Binance halt had to do with what's going on with, it, with inscriptions. So next, this is, uh, now this actually is live. This is from mempool.space, and you can get live what's going on with the blocks here on the right and with the pricing on the left. So you can see here on the left, the low priority is $6.88, and the high priority is $7.88. And, 70, and 77 cents. So you can see the pricing has gone down, but still very high. So what's the solution for this? The solution is layer ones that are fast and layer twos. And I'm gonna give you some example from this website. This website's called makeuseof.com. Again, it's called makeuseof.com. And it's comparing all the layer ones and even some layer twos. And you can see on top here, <clears throat> excuse, I'm losing my voice. Transactions per second for Bitcoin is uh, seven seconds. This is probably before, actually I know as a fact, this is before the inscriptions. 
and the finality is, you can see is extremely slow. So I'm a little worried about Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin actually may do better in the long term if it just has that one story, that one narrative that Bitcoin is um, a safe haven asset, as asset and that its use case is of a digital gold. That's all I think it should be. Like when it goes into these other use cases, what happens is it may uh, force people to start comparing Bitcoin with other layer with layer ones. And we don't really want to do that because Bitcoin's story and use case is, is not strong against layer ones that are uh, into DeFi, for example, and NFTs. So I'm not sure that a jack of all trades for Bitcoin is a good idea in the long term. And the last thing I want to note it, to show you is that some layer ones just do this much faster, like um, Cardano. Well, here you can see, yeah, Cardano. I was going to say you can't see it because the finale is slow because that's on the right side here. But if you're left side, it says 250 transactions per second. It's still too slow. But Polygon layer two is fast. And then you can see some other ones that are fast, like Avalanche is very fast and Cosmos. And lastly, the, the monolithic um, layer one, Solana, is up to 50,000 uh, TPS. And theoretically, it's even faster and has near instant finality. So that, that's going to be the solution for the problem that's going on in, in uh, inscrip inscriptions in Bitcoin. So that's all I want to say today is that, uh, <clears throat> is that we have a problem with the Bitcoin blockchain and we've got all these, because we've got all these inscriptions of shit coins and you can see the number of transactions is going sky high.